Hey everyone, it's Q&A Tuesday. Guys, first and foremost, as usual, I want to thank you for all your questions, and I have a bunch of exciting questions here to talk about. Obviously, I won't get through all of them, but I will try to pick the best questions and go through as many as possible. I'm going to dive right into it, and this question is from a female follower, and contrary to all belief, this is not just a boys club when it comes to watches. This, you know, I do have quite a few uh, female followers, and one of the followers' name is Ada Blaine. Her question is the following. Hey, Roman, I have a question about watch etiquette. How can one politely and non-creepily check out someone's watch, ask them about it? How can someone be suave in terms of watch appreciation from an outsider's perspective? I'd like to appear inquisitive rather than seem as though I'm chasing money because I know a nice watch when I see one. Thanks to my education provided by what's on my desk. That's awesome. How, how can I clear that I have an intellectual curiosity when it comes to their wristwatch and that I'm not looking for a date? LOL. Uh, what are some good bulletproof comments to make or questions to ask? To look like a semi-horologist myself and not a peasant, lol. It's actually a pretty, it's pretty funny how you put your question, Ada, and uh, uh, this is where we get into somewhat of a sensitive topic where you're kind of implying that, you know, as a female, I'm going to come up to a guy and say, hey, dude, nice watch, what you got on your wrist there, talk to me about it. And you want to come off as a watch enthusiast rather than somebody that's, let's say, chasing money, a quote-unquote a gold digger, as you put. It's a tough one. As a male, if, if a female approaches me and tells me, oh, that's a nice watch, especially if I'm wearing one of my diamond watches, and I'll, and I'll uh, use my diamond royal oak, which I often wear, as you guys have seen it before, I'll use that as an example. So if I'm somewhere and I'm out and about, and a female approaches me and goes to me, hey, that's a nice watch, and she's looking at a blinged out, uh, expensive diamond piece. As a male, unfortunately, I probably would take it the way you put it, that, hey, you know, she's looking at it from a monetary perspective. As a male, I'll tell you, if a woman comes up to me, now, I'm not looking for dates, I'm actually a married man, and uh, so I never look for dates, I haven't looked for dates in over 15 years since I've been married, but let's say if I wasn't married and a girl came up to me, now whether she complimented me on the watch just from the way it looks, or furthermore, if she came up to me and said, oh, that's a beautiful AP Royal Oak 39 millimeter chronograph, you know, it was released in 2003 in the 39 millimeter case. I feel like this may be a male watch and also a female watch. What do you think of the newer 41 millimeter version? As a watch guy, that would be a turn on for me when a, when, someone, when a female would come up and actually kick knowledge in regards to particular watches. So either way, whoever's on the other end or the, whoever's on the receiving end, whoever the guy might be, it's definitely something that's going to turn him on and most likely want to ask you for a date should they be a guy that's available for dating. Hope that answers your question. Uh, next question. Let's see. Here's a good one from Oliver Tintin. Hey, Roman. Thanks for answering my last questions. You're welcome. New question. What is your opinion about polishing watches that are lightly scratched, good or bad? Every watch collector I meet talking horror about how bad polishing watches is. The answer is absolutely false. If, if you have the right guy doing the job. And my answer is, and again, when it comes to modern watches, I'll talk about vintage separately, and my answer is always the same. Guys, don't worry about polishing your watches as long as you have the right guy doing it. Now, and when I say the right guy doing it, it's because it becomes expensive to send your watch to the manufacturer to get it completely overhauled or polished. What you end up having to do is finding a local watchmaker or watch shop that's good enough to polish your watches. And unfortunately, those guys are not a dime a dozen. Those guys, unfortunately, are a dime breed. So it's very difficult to find not a good watchmaker, but specifically a good watch polisher. It's actually a two-step process. In order to polish a watch, you don't just take off the watch, put it on the polishing wheel, and take out the scratches. Now, to properly polish the watch, you have to take the entire watch apart and polish the parts separately, bezel, case, case back, etc., etc. Watches have multiple finishes, matte finishes, uh, shiny finishes, uh, two-tone watches. There are different methods to polishing a watch, but however, should you find someone that can do this properly, has the right machinery, and so on and so forth, there's no issue with having to polish your watch every six months if you choose to do so, because at the end of the day, when they do polish a watch, the amount of material that's actually taken off the watch is so, so small that it is completely insignificant. And when it's done properly, you wouldn't be able to tell that this watch ever even had a scratch on it, or if it was polished. And I'll show you an example. 
And I've told you guys before, I tape some of these things back to back, so oftentimes you'll see me wearing the same shirt. And I just finished taping an episode of What's on My Desk where I talked about a Pride of Russia, which recently came back from being polished. And I'm gonna grab this watch, and I'm gonna compare it to a watch that's scratched up. Give me a second, I'm just gonna jump in here. Two hours later. So here's a watch I just picked up at the trade show that I was at. Uh, it's another oldie but a goodie. It's an AP Alingian Titanium. And let me show you how scratched up this watch is. Look at the scratches on the bezel. And rightfully so, this watch is 10 years old. Uh, it's been worn, it's been worn well. Uh, there's some dings on the bezel. And most of you probably look at this and say, wow, this watch is in pretty bad shape. Well, when I bought it, I said, it's really not a big deal because my guy will make this watch look new. Case in point, the Pride of Russia that I showed in the last episode uh, came in and this watch was mangled. And by mangled, I mean, there were a lot of dings. There were deep scratches. There were so many things that were cosmetically wrong with this watch that when I gave it to my watchmaker, he rolled his eyes once again and said, you know what, I'll handle it as usual. Look at the watch now that it came back from polishing. The edges of the bezel are sharp. Note the lines on the bezel as well as the case, they all match. Note the shiny parts of the bezel as well as the case. Everything lines up, everything is as new as if this watch just came out of the factory. And the reason for that is because I have a great watchmaker who has the proper tools, who takes the watch entirely apart before polishing, polishes every part separately, making it look brand new. On top of that, when you get a watch that has a lot of heavy dings in it, or dents I would say, you actually end up adding metal before repolishing the bezel. Case in point with this particular watch, in order to get the bezel to its original shape, there was a big ding at like nine o'clock here. He actually ended up adding gold to the bezel, repolishing, recutting the corners and making it back to its original shape. It's not a cheap job. It's not a fast job, but nevertheless, it's a job that can be done. So let me tell you guys, I've had guys fall off motorcycles and literally slide 50 feet on their watch and bring me those watches completely mangled and they were back to as good as new, provided you have someone that's good that's doing it. Don't worry about over polishing your watches. If you, if you anal when it comes to certain scratches on your watches and you wanna make them look as good as new, Give them to a good guy, get it done, and continue enjoy wearing your watches. And last, I did mention that uh, vintage watch as well. I'm not a big vintage expert, uh, but I do know one thing that when it comes to vintage watches, and by vintage I'm talking, I'm talking about going back 50, 60, 70 years. Those are the watches that you really don't want to touch, and the reason you don't want to touch them is because those vintage watches have certain patina that makes the watch more valuable. You want to keep them as original as possible. So you don't want to take a watch that's 70 years old, give it to a watchmaker and have it made completely brand new. You want those watches to actually physically look vintage. Now, of course, if you got a cracked crystal or if you got a cracked part and you can actually replace it with the original vintage parts, that's a different story. But for the most part, when it comes to vintage stuff, do not polish. Here's a good one. And this is, I guess, a question, a suggestion uh, from a gentleman by the name of Terry C. Hi, Roman, great video again. Thank you, Terry. Uh, quick question, does someone make a complication that has a simple display to remind the wearer to complete a certain daily task along with a toggle button that allows you to set the display as complete when finished that task? At midnight, the watch resets display again, so the next day you can toggle it when you complete that task. I don't know what to call it. Take your meds complication or call your mother complication. I think it'd be quite useful. Thank you. Uh, Terry, that's actually a great suggestion question. and. Uh, probably be a very useful complication. I talked about various complications and watches before and how some of them are somewhat useless. Uh, this actually would be a useful complication. And to answer your question, that's yes and no. That complication does exist in watches that are alarm watches. Probably my favorite alarm watch to date would be the Brigade Reveal de Tar, which is the alarm piece. Uh, they come in yellow gold and white gold. Um, because the, when the alarm goes off, it actually vibrates the watch and it, and it, and it dings pretty loud to, it can wake you up in the morning even if you're in deep sleep. So that's one way of reminding yourself is to buy an alarm watch and set that alarm at a certain time. And when that alarm goes off, yes, it's not gonna tell you to call your mother or take your medication, but in the very least, you will know why you set that alarm for three o'clock in the afternoon. And in the back of your head, you'll say, okay, it's time to call my mother or take my medication. Specifically to make a watch that allows you to pick uh, certain reminders, um, and a mechanical watch at that, that would be a feet and a half. I was talking to a guy a, a while back who called me, I was like, Risen, can you talk to some of the manufacturers that you work with? I wanna make a watch that reminds those of a Muslim faith of, of prayer time, a mechanical watch at that, that you could set that where alarm would go off five times a day to remind them that it's prayer time. 
And I did speak to a, uh, I did speak to a manufacturer, I won't mention any names, that uh, said that that's a feat that can probably happen. We never ended up doing anything with that because I guess it didn't end up being cost effective and or what maybe it was too much of an investment in order to do so. But there was talks of doing something like that. But even still, it's not something that specifically tells you what to do. Uh, if you want to watch to set a reminder for you, uh, the best thing to do, unfortunately, is not going to be a mechanical watch. The best person to remind you is going to be Siri. Hey, Siri, remind me to tape an episode of What's on My Desk for next Thursday at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Okay, I added tape an episode of What's on My Desk for Tigger Reminders for tomorrow at 10 a.m. This is the easiest and most effective way to set reminders specifically to what you want. Who knows? Um, Richard Meal made, quote unquote, the sex watch. Uh, which turned different dials and it gave you uh, different sexual phrases on a dial. Uh, if anybody could do it, I'm pretty sure Richard Mule could, but again, it would be a set of specific reminders that would be preset in a wheel that are already written on the watch. Unless you go digital, it would be very difficult to be able to spell out exactly what you want. You know, you would physically have to have a keyboard or a way to set the letters. Uh, do I see it feasible to put an entire alphabet into a watch and have little pushers in order to change the letters around in order to actually spell something out? I'm fairly certain there's a watchmaker out there that could come up with something like that, especially if you talk to somebody independent, that they love taking on crazy projects like that. But how practical would it be in order for you to say, call your mother? First of all, you have to have a, have a big enough display, which would probably be limited to a certain number of letters. And then imagine having to press pushers in order to change every letter through the entire alphabet in order to say, call your, in order to spell out, call your mother. Probably be a bit of a nightmare, but nevertheless, it would be a pretty cool watch. So yeah, definitely an interesting idea. So I hope I somewhat answered your question. I'm gonna take one more and uh, get out of here. Let's see. Here's a quick question from a mix-up AJA. You're so real, big man. Top respect to you, bro. Thank you very much. Also, I just wanted to know the Sky Dweller or the Daytona. Which one would you have? And the black Daytona dial is that any good or white much better? Uh, quick answer for you. Daytona has been the number one, in my opinion, has been the number one selling watch of all time. Uh, so I would go with the Daytona. As far as the black or the white dial, I can tell you what the market demands and the market says that the white dial is more popular. And I think because the ceramic bezel in the new Daytona stands out much better against the white dial versus the black, where it kind of all blends in with the black dial. That's why the white dial Daytona trade slightly higher than the black dial Daytonas. Does that mean I don't like the Skydweller? Absolutely not. I love the Skydweller. It's, I actually like the stainless steel Skydweller with the black dial. So, you know, it'd be a tough choice for me, but at the end of the day, I would still go with the Daytona. I also personally like it with the white dial, again, because the ceramic bezel uh, sort of stands out against the white dial, as I said, and so does majority of the people out there. The black dials are still trading at over list and way over list, and they're still just as popular. It's just the white one is slightly more popular. Hope that answers your question. Well, guys, that's it for me today. Last but not least, um, I want to show you what's on my wrist. And in the last episode of What's on My Desk, I mentioned to you, I finally found the Crystal Hublot. Ever since I found it, I, I put it on my wrist and I haven't taken it off yet. Absolutely love this watch. Go watch the last episode of What's on My Desk where I talk about this watch in detail and show it in more detail. But this is going to stay on my wrist for quite a while. It's going to be one of those keepers for now. Again, I don't own many watches. In fact, I don't own any watches. I don't tend to keep anything. And this is going to be one of those very few keepers that are going to be in my personal safe. Guys, thank you again for all your questions. If you like this episode, make sure you hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next Tuesday.